Bon Yunaka, do you know that cybercrime is becoming a growing problem in Fiji? Cybercrime is defined as a crime in which a computer is the object of the crime, such as hacking and spam. Cybercrime is also cyberbullying and using fake profiles to cause panic and spread false news. If you're involved in this or know anyone who's committing these crimes, report them immediately. I'm Polly. And I'm Peter. We host the Traffic Jam Show on City FM. From 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. every weekday. Do, do the, the right, right thing. Yandabidaka Fiji, in this bulletin, opposition refutes claims by land minister. Minister explains virus test costs. And 15 female pilots flying for Fiji Airways. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nath. Opposition MP Vilyaminga Voka has refuted claims by Lands Minister Ashneel Sudhakar that landowners were given a blank piece of paper to sign a petition. Gavoka told FPC News that the opposition has a standard petition form which they've been using in recent years and the same form was signed by landowners from Singatoka. He says the opposition has made strategic approaches regarding the petition to ensure no parliamentary laws were breached. Very careful, we're very careful that um, we don't do anything that is not in keeping with the laws of parliament. In parliament, when you, ask, when you, when you uh, want someone to sign a petition, you must be there yourself, you as the collector. And you must explain to the person what he or she is signing up for. And you cannot coerce anyone. It has to be voluntary. The Health Ministry is planning to conduct COVID-19 tests locally within the next month. Minister Dr. Ifiremi Wangainambete says at present they're sending test samples to the World Health Organization Laboratory in Melbourne, Australia, with each test costing $4,000. He says they are collaborating with international organizations on ways to quickly identify COVID-19 instead of sending out samples elsewhere to be tested. Uh, we are using budget uh, provisions that are being budgeted for the Fiji set of disease control from the Fiji government. As I've alluded to, we have molecular testing, which is similar to what's been used for COVID-19 within the Fiji Center for Disease Control. And we've been in discussion with WHO and recently with the U.S. Center for Disease Control. And we hope to be able to test this locally within the next one or two weeks. The government isn't sitting idly by in relation to violence against women and children. In her ministerial statement in Parliament on the National Action Plan, Women's Minister Medesini Vuniwanga said they may not be riling up people's emotions on social media on these matters, but the government is working hard to address this social ill. Vuniwanga says the Prime Minister, Wurengen Bani Marama, once stated that violence against women and girls is a national shame. In 2019 alone, 10 Fijian women were killed by their intimate partners. It is important to recognize and acknowledge that there are not only painful personal stories behind the statistics, but there are also attitudes, social norms, and cultural complacency. Attitudes that are embedded in gender inequality, gender discrimination, and patriarchy. The national airline has 15 female pilots. This was highlighted by the Civil Aviation Minister, Aya Sayed Kayum, while responding to a question in Parliament on the participation of women in the industry. Sayed Kayum says Fiji Airways has four female captains, while others are first and second officers. He adds a woman is also responsible for oversight of the entire fleet of Fiji Link. Sayed Kayum adds they've embarked on a leadership development program in 2018 to help the participation of women in leadership roles in the industry. This is a two-year program and there are about 26 employees uh, from a cross-section of the company, of which 14 actually are women. Uh, Fiji Airways has several women in strategic and technical roles. The Unit Trust of Fiji, which has become a major investment institution, is expanding into the regional market. Economy Minister A. S. A. R. Kayum says their reputation in managing funds well and the creativity used in offering products has attracted some regional players. He adds the Unit Trust of Fiji has the potential to expand to other Pacific Island countries for larger investment. Their partners include currently, there's an investment by the Samoan National Provident Fund, They've invested about a little over $8 million in UTOF. The Unit Trust of Samoa has invested about $7.5 million. The Samoa Parliamentary Pension Scheme has invested uh, about $800,000. And the Vanuatu National Provident Fund has invested about $5 million 
Neil Trusted Fiji. A review of the open merit recruitment system has made positive impacts on the civil service. Attorney General A. S. A. at Kayum says the recruitment and selection processes are now faster, while service delivery and the introduction of new ideas have also improved at all levels. Responding to Sodelpa MP Rote Mumu Kepa's question on whether a consultation was carried out, Said Kayum said unions were made aware. Before the OMRS was actually implemented, we had invited trade unions. In fact, we were part of the process. Uh, they attended some meetings, some meetings they did not attend. So they were given equal opportunity to come and make their, make their views known. At least the trade unions were. Thank you. Overseas, the Turkish president is threatening a new military offensive in Syria to try to stop government advancing forces. Nearly one million people are being displaced in the region, many of them children. And as the United Nations warns, this could create a humanitarian catastrophe. Here is the story of one family which is trying to flee for the third time. Coming up, new player for LA and Vancouver Sevens. And Bowling Fiji targets young players. Welcome back. Police Sevens forward Suliano Volivoli is the new player named in the final 14 Fiji Airways men's seven side for the Los Angeles and Vancouver Sevens. Head coach Gareth Baber says Volivoli's consistent work ethic and attitude to training has impressed. Baber as Volivoli has a maturity about his game, he knows Sevens and he loves to work. Sevoloni Modenidangi, Chosua Vakurunambuli, Kavikini Tambu, Apanisa Dakaum Balavu, Meli Nderanalangi, Filimoni Mbotitu, Waisea Nadungu, Jerry Tuwai, Alessio Nanduva, Aminiasi Tuimamba, Livai Ikanakonda, Asaeli Tuivauka and Napoleoni Ratu make up the rest of the squad. The Los Angeles Sevens kicks off next Sunday. The good news keeps coming for FPC TV and FPC sports viewers. The South Pacific's biggest media company, the Fijian Broadcasting Corporation, has announced it will be airing a number of major sporting events live and exclusive in the next few months. Aquila Dama reports. Broadcaster has secured the rights for the Euro 2020, NRL and also the Fury Wilder. FPC is a service provider, basically. So I think uh, we are providing a service to the, the whole country by, by giving them all these different sports that we are getting on the channel and it's all for free. Local sporting events will not be left out as for the first time FBC Sports will be airing the Suva Zone 1 Athletics Meet live next week. For our athletes, you know, at times they are not recognized at the uh, Coca-Cola levels. Uh, we have a lot of uh, so-called uh, coaches around. You know, that are right for some athletes to represent uh, them in the other various events. They might not show during the Coca Cola games. With this on board, with you on board, let me see. As I said, I'm very, very much appreciative with this. The Suva Zone 1 will be held at the ANZ Stadium in Suva next Thursday. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Bowling Fiji is serious about the development of the sport amongst youth in the country. Speaking to FBC Sports, Suva Bowling Club President Samuela Tuikilangana says for the sport to grow, there will need more youth to take part in tournaments. Tuikilangana adds, this is, if this is to happen, they first need to break the mentality that bowling is a sport for all people. On the mindset of people here in Fiji that this is an all people's game. This is probably why one of the main reasons where you don't see young people doing it. But I tell you something, other countries, Malaysia, Australia and other countries, people that are over 25, they, they hardly can be to represent the country. That's how young players are playing overseas now. But it's going to take a while to drill that into the mind of the young people today. Yeah? 
Fiji amateur boxing coaches and referees held a one-day workshop yesterday hosted by Level 3 coaching instructor Seru Whippy. Whippy is in the country to attend the International Amateur Boxing Association 2020 Oceania Forum on Saturday. More than 10 Fiji amateur boxing officials, coaches and enthusiasts were part of the workshop where coaching and judging tips were discussed. Today's workshop is uh, conducted by our former president of the Fiji Amateur Boxing Association. Uh, Mr. Sarah Whippy, who, uh, who, is, uh, who lives in Australia, but he's actually on the Fiji, um, he's resident in the Fiji Amateur Box Association with IBA, and he um, comes over and does uh, uh, referee and judges training. He's an IBA 3, a level 3 coach, IBA, the only one in Fiji, and uh, just very few in the Pacific, I think he's the only one. Expect cloudy conditions in the afternoon with the possibility of evening showers over the Fiji group today. And that's your FPC Morning News. Remember to join us at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For these stories and others, you can also tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. That's it from me for now. Have a good morning. हमारे खूबसूरत देश फिजी में चाइल्ड अब्यूज की घटनाएं आए दिन बढ़ रही हैं। क्यों बच्चों का मासूम बचपन अब्यूज का शिकार हो जाता है अपने बच्चों की सुरक्षा का खास ख्याल रखें। उनसे बातचीत करें उनके दोस्तों के बारे में जानें। आज के बच्चे देश का भविष्य है मैं दीप्ति और मैं मोनिश आपके हम सफर शामिल हो जाए हमारे साथ मंडे टू फ्राइडे फाइव फोर्टी फाइव आई तक रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन आरोप